The term Derech Eretz includes all the situations arriving from and dependent upon the circumstance that the earth is the place where the individual must live, fulfill his destiny, and dwell together with others, and that he must utilize resources and conditions provided on earth in order to live and to accomplish his purpose. Accordingly, the term Derech Eretz is used primarily to refer to ways of earning a living to the social order that prevails on earth, as well as to the mores and considerations of courtesy and propriety arising from social living, and also to things pertinent to good breeding and general education. The history of Limit HaTorah in our community begins with the life's work of Rabbeinu Hirsch. Although he was successful in establishing a school in the community with an appreciation for Torah and Derech Eretz, the constraints of the requisite coursework in German schools did not allow for as much Torah learning in the school day as Rav Hirsch would have wanted. Frankfurt was a city built on commerce and banking, and an education was the only way in to these industries. The reform in the city had a well-established school, the Philanthropen, and the willingness of parents to send their children to the Hirsch Realschule was a vote of confidence to the quality of the school and the appreciation for Limur HaTorah. According to one account, there was only one member of the Hirsch community to hold a doctorate. The bulk of the education was geared towards commerce. The Frankfurt private bankers had backed the bonds of foreign governments and funded large projects such as railroad systems. Other firms traded in imports and raw materials. Internationally known names like Rothschild and locally known names like Schwarzschild dominated the local commerce. These were the opportunities available in Frankfurt. Nevertheless, traditionally, Germans and German Jews, even the Orthodox, had a healthy appetite for the culture of the day in the music and the poetry celebrated throughout the country. The Hirsch Realschule extended through high school, but not until Rav Shlomo Breuer took over the rabbinate was there a Beis HaMedrash. Rav Breuer had to fight with his constituents to open a dedicated Beis Medrash, and was only given permission if he were to fund it himself. Learning and learned men were always revered in Frankfurt, and much tzedakah came out of that community, but they hadn't yet realized the need for their own institution of higher Torah learning. The yeshiva, known as Adas Yeshurun, was led by Rav Yosef Breuer eventually, and remained until the war. The Nazi war machine would claim the lives of approximately two-thirds of our kahila. a lot of us because uh, uh, it's based on the principle of Torah and Derechayats to which we were accustomed and used for all our time in Germany for all our lives. Arriving in Washington Heights, the community housed the best medrash in the old Broadway building until in 1973 it found a new home on Bennett Avenue. Led by Rev Friedler, Rev Perlow, Rev Pinchas Khan, and today by Rev Levy, the Beis HaMedrash was for many years a homegrown yeshiva program, offering smicha and a full day of learning, with students attending evening classes at city and Baruch colleges. The Beis HaMedrash carries the name of Rav Shlomo Breuer, its founder. When Rav Schwab's upon the Rav came the first year, I was one of the first to meet him in the Beis HaMedrash. We had nine boys, I think, 1958. One of the dreams of Rav Breuer Zetzal was to have a staff who would teach both Lamurei Kodesh and Lamurei Chol. So we went Beis HaMedrash in the morning, real Torah and Derech Eretz outlook. Beis HaMedrash uh, from nine, to, or early from nine to five, and then after that we, we 
get our way down to City College. Our Beis HaMedrash produced most of the fine role models that the community is known for. Clay Kodesh and Bale Batim, who sought to make a Kiddush Hashem, bringing fine character and reliable Torah true demeanor to all aspects of life. And they've pursued a varied mix of professions, from those available to Orthodox Jews in the United States. And then came the 1980s. An economic boom followed Ronald Reagan into office, leaving the inflation and the lag of the 70s economy behind. Commodities markets boomed as regulations were eased through Reaganomics. A new generation of youth left high school with a world of opportunity awaiting them. Among those opportunities, the two branches of the commodities firm Phillip Brothers, Chemicals and Metals, had jobs waiting for eager young men. The jobs didn't require anything more than a high school diploma and the determination to rise up out of the mailroom. Ludwig Jesselson, the chairman, who had been with the firm since 1938, would say, A trader lives by his wits. The firm entered the 1980s resilient and only profited more from the gas shortage of the 1970s. It had become the 15th largest company in the United States. It was also the company that gave rise to the careers and excesses of the famous tycoons Mark Rich and Pinchas Green. Much like the trading firms and banking enterprise of 19th century Frankfurt, Philip Brothers was the creation of two Jewish brothers from Hamburg. The youth of Frankfurt transplanted in America, ironically joined the calling of their antecedents. They found their way back to international commerce. Mr. Norbert Strauss was the head of the traffic department in Phillip Brothers and was able to employ many young men of Washington Heights. Well, I, I started out as a clerk in the traffic department and I eventually became a general traffic manager who was responsible for hiring trainees either directly into traffic or through the mailroom. But most of the young men and, and the girls who started the fellow brothers who came without experience, started in my department, they got a trading in my department, from then went into trading where they became successful. Well, not necessarily in mailroom, but if they had some basic business uh, idea, I had uh, an applicant who was a rabbi with a small shul who wanted to give up his profession and start as a trainee at Philip Brothers. And he became, he became successful. And uh, uh, on the other hand, I had a, somebody who came in with a PhD, but no experience, couldn't handle math, and he was out after three months. Young members of the Kahilla were up and coming. Many could now afford houses in suburban outposts. The Kahilla opened two branches in the 1980s, Paramus and Muncie, both with the blessings of Schwab and later Rav Geli. American Orthodoxy had also gone the way of success. It was a new day. At the same time, another movement was growing, one powerful enough to offset the glimmering promise of hedonism and American prosperity, and a movement that could give meaning to the newfound success, the movement of the American Kolo. As a liquid yeshiva steadily grew, it opened satellite yeshivas such as the ones in Long Beach, Philadelphia, and Scranton. Boys from our neighborhood traditionally attended yeshiva in Israel for a year or two before returning to our Beis HaMedrash, often at the German-influenced schools Kol Torah and Ber Yaakov. Now the draw of the local yeshivas was growing, yeshivas that would encourage a new generation to devote many years to Torah study. As our Beis HaMedrash became smaller, it took on the role of a community kolo, and that is the role it has maintained since. A new generation of youth has received their Torah education in the halls of the great Lithuanian yeshivas. Torah and Torah Heretz as applied today will need to re-examine the value of an education and acculturation independent of the value it lends to a man of career. 
the new generation will need to see the benefit of viewing the world from the standpoint of a Jew's mission within society, even as the movement of yeshivas and kolalim sometimes define the Jewish mission as it exists in the study halls alone. By the way of example and especially through the many role model products of the original Breuer's Beis HaMedrash, who have returned today in early retirement, we see this in action already. For those abroad, expatriates wherever they may be, it should be their role to produce Talmidi Chachamim committed to the idea that Torah and its ideas are big enough to show mastery over all of the creation. This mission will be all the more important as the Orthodox community grows in proportion to other factions in Judaism that have been rapidly declining. In this way, the term Torah in Derech Eretz will not be a taboo, but a banner to rally behind. Our mission is charted, and the task lies before us. Amod v'nasem alachtenu. Thank you.